Position the patient sitting upright, preferably in an ENT chair. Raise the patient so that his nose is approximately at your eye level and position the headrest behind his occiput to prevent unexpected head movement. Place an absorbent pad over his chest and provide an emesis basin. Proper visualization of the source of bleeding is essential for management. Use a headlamp with an adjustable narrow beam to provide for optimal lighting. In this video, the physician uses a head mirror which provides excellent illumination of the field. Check the posterior oropharynx for blood coming down from the nasal passageways. Instruct the patient to gently blow his nose to clear away any clots or blood. Then use a nasal speculum to evaluate the anterior nasal canal. Insert the speculum so that the device may be opened vertically. You may place your index finger on the nose to stabilize the device during visualization. Look for evidence of active or recent bleeding on the anterior portion of the nasal septum in the region of Kisselbach's plexus. Also assess for blood flowing anteriorly from the back of the nose. A Fraser tip suction catheter can be used under direct visualization to clear the passageways of clots and blood if necessary. Next, consider applying a topical vasoconstrictor spray such as oxymetazoline. The use of such agents may stop small hemorrhages. Additionally, vasoconstrictors shrink the nasal mucosa and thus enlarge the nasal passageways, facilitating the insertion of packing devices. Alternatively, cotton soaked in 4% cocaine solution or in 4% lidocaine with epinephrine may be placed in the nose and left for 10 to 15 minutes. Viscous lidocaine may be applied directly to the nose if the use of an anterior or posterior packing device is anticipated. If a source of anterior bleeding from Kisselbach's plexus is identified, you may attempt to cauterize it directly using silver nitrate. This technique must be performed under direct visualization and blind application is strictly contraindicated. Hold the nasal speculum in your non-dominant hand and spread the nares vertically. Hold the silver nitrate stick in your dominant hand and carefully begin to cauterize by rolling the stick over the bleeding mucosa until an eschar forms, which usually takes about five seconds. The eschar will have a grayish-black appearance. Avoid excessive cautery and cautery of both sides of the septum, which may lead to septal necrosis or perforation. If you are unable to localize the exact source of an anterior hemorrhage, or if silver nitrate cautery has failed, you will need to perform an anterior packing of the nose. Prior to any packing procedure, remember to apply a local vasoconstrictor and a topical anesthetic, as described in the preparation section. Multiple methods of anterior packing are available, several of which are reviewed in this section. The choice of anterior packing technique will largely depend upon the available equipment. Be familiar with the specific devices used at your institution. Traditional nasal packing is performed with cotton ribbon gauze soaked in petroleum jelly or bismuth iodoform paste. Use a bayonet forceps to advance one end of the gauze along the floor of the nasal cavity until you meet resistance. Remove the forceps and advance another layer of gauze on top of the first, and then continue the insertion in an accordion-type fashion. Note that multiple layers of gauze are utilized, and in general, about one to one and a half meters are required to adequately pack the nasal cavity. Traditional nasal packing has largely been replaced by prefabricated nasal tampons, which are covered in the next portion of this video. Nasal tampons, such as the Maricel tampon, are easier to use and as efficacious as traditional packing and should be utilized if available. In addition to the 8 cm Maricel device shown here, smaller Maricel sponges are available that can be used for minor anterior epistaxes. To insert the smaller Maricel sponge, 
first lubricate it with topical antibiotic ointments such as bacitracin, then simply insert it into the anterior portion of the nasal cavity just deep enough so that it rests inside the nares. Gently rehydrate the sponge with several milliliters of saline solution so that it expands inside the nasal canal. The insertion of the larger Maricel sponge, which is indicated for more substantial hemorrhages, is performed in a similar fashion. First, lubricate the device with a topical antibiotic ointment. Insert it into the nares at a 45 degree angle and advance it one or two centimeters before bringing it perpendicular to the face and advancing it posteriorly into the nasal cavity. Once inserted, rehydrate the sponge with three to five milliliters of saline solution. Note that this Maricel sponge is inserted deeply into the posterior nasal canal and may be uncomfortable for the patient during insertion. To secure the device, the strings may be tied around a piece of folded gauze placed at the outer nares, or they may be affixed to the cheek using tape or a transparent dressing. The Maricel tampon may be trimmed with scissors prior to insertion if it is too large for the patient. The Rapid Rhino Anterior Pack is an inflatable nasal tampon with a hydrocolloid surface that enhances hemostasis. Prior to placing the Rapid Rhino, it must be submersed in sterile water for 30 seconds. Do not soak the device in saline. Placement is similar to that of the Marisol tampon. Insert the device at a 45 degree angle and advance at one or two centimeters. Then bring it perpendicular to the face and gently insert it parallel to the floor of the nasal cavity. Once the device is fully inserted into the nose, use a 10 milliliter syringe to inflate the balloon with air. The volume of air required will vary by patient. Use the pilot cuff on the exterior of the device to estimate the pressure exerted by the balloon. Finally, secure the inflation port to the patient's face using tape or a transparent dressing. The Rapid Rhino comes in both 5.5 cm anterior and 7.5 cm anterior posterior sizes. The balloon of the Rapid Rhino should be inflated only with air, not with water or saline solution. If bleeding cannot be localized anteriorly, or if it cannot be controlled with anterior packing, then a posterior epistaxis likely exists and posterior packing is indicated. As with anterior nasal packing, various methods exist for managing posterior epistaxis. In this section, posterior packing is demonstrated with the readily available 16 French Foley catheter. Prior to placement of the posterior pack, remember to pre-treat the nasal cavity with a vasoconstricting agent and a topical anesthetic. Gently insert the Foley catheter into the nose and advance it parallel to the floor of the nasal cavity until the tip of the catheter can be seen in the posterior oropharynx through the mouth. Inflate the balloon with five to seven milliliters of water and then gently pull the catheter anteriorly until it becomes firmly seated against the posterior nasal cavity. Then slowly inflate the balloon with another five to seven milliliters of water. Finally, place a piece of gauze around the catheter at the nares and place a clamp on the catheter to prevent posterior migration. Additional anterior packing with ribbon gauze may be performed after posterior packing if necessary. Packing of the contralateral nasal cavity may be beneficial to provide additional tamponade and to prevent septal deviation.